Hello all, welcome to the ninth episode of Data Pancakes. We are super happy and excited to have you back. This episode is going to be super interesting because we are going to touch the concept of data products. Before I do that, I quickly want to do a quick recap on where we had left off from our previous episodes. So as you can see in the screen, uh, we started off the whole concept by defining of what is a data mesh architectural pattern. So we talked about uh, the pros and cons, the different definitions which are available for data mesh in the industry, and a bit more into like how do we map these concepts into something practical. That's the whole concept or the idea for uh, all our episodes uh, which we have covered. Next, we went into a bit more into the concepts associated with data mesh like domains. Uh, so we talked about application domain, uh, a data domain, we talked about business domains, and uh, the next piece of this was to map these into different products. So we saw how Microsoft Purview is mapped into the business domain piece, how Microsoft Fabric is mapping more into the data piece, data domain piece, and how applications like SQL database or other OLTP backends are associated with application domains. Next, we talked about uh, different personas which exist in an organization and uh, why is it important to really understand these personas uh, to ma make sure that you have proper governance set up inside your data platform, inside the data mesh topology. This episode is going to be quite interesting because we are going to talk about the concept of data products. It's a highly debated topic. Uh, there's a lot of confusion in the industry regarding data products and that's something which we want to uh, touch upon. Uh, one of the major reasons is that there's not a lot of clarity on how you would define a data product within an organization. Uh, every day we go to a customer, uh, they come back and the understanding of data products, it's, it's, it's very different. In, in some scenarios, they talk about uh, bundling a lot of concepts together, uh, like infrastructure, metadata, which we time will cover later. Uh, or some customers say like, okay, data product is one-on-one -on -one to an entity. So this is an area which uh, uh, there is no single answer, right? So we really have to find out uh, what are these different definitions. And uh, in this episode, we are going to try to create some clarity for you. Uh, so with that, I would like to hand it over to Pete Hine. Well, thank you, uh, Sarat, for the introduction. And I think you're spot on. Huh? So there's basically no single right definition. There's no industry standard. And I think that's mainly also because of maybe the initial version of a data product that was first defined in Zamak's book, so Data Mesh, where she unpacked that concept. And I think first it's important to distinguish between managing data as a product which in my view is way more the discipline of the way you treat data and you set the ownership and you ensure the corresponding metadata is provided along with the data itself. But that's more the discipline, so the activities or the methodology of managing data really as a product. And there's this term called a data product, which is more an artifact or the, the subject itself. And yeah, there you see many different definitions out there. And I would also um, use my screen uh, next within uh, one or two minutes to show you what kind of different dif definitions I uh, stumbled upon when uh, crawling the internet. But in the initial, um, I think, theory of Samak, so in Data Mesh, she described it first as an architectural quant. And to know what that is, you need to read another book of Neil Ford, The Fundamental Software Architecture. And in there, um, it is described as the smallest unit or logical unit of, of a component of the architecture you can deploy. So to me, that really sounds more or less like a microservice. When you start to carry on reading in that book, um, somewhere later, she introduces, well, a data product is the combination of data, metadata, infrastructure, and code, all encapsulated within that same architectural quant. So it's the combination of many different things. And I think this is also what I see mainly causes a lot of confusion. So is it always like that? And um, I think initially also we at Microsoft and together with our colleagues, we also started pioneering more or less that concept uh, of combining these four different elements. So if I would show my screen now and I'll give you an example. So I will be back in one second and show you what I found. Okay, a concrete example. So here we are at the Microsoft page 
And this is the Cloud Skill Analytics Framework. It's part of the Cloud Adoption Framework, which is prescriptive guidance coupled with blueprints and templates, uh, for instance, how to build a data platform on the cloud. So within this framework, um, here on the left, you see architectures. So if we click on that, you even see here a section called data products. So let's click on that and you see different examples. So reference patterns. So let me open up this page. And here you see that definition, I think, and that matches more like what we already discussed in Zamax view. So that combination of metadata, data, infrastructure, and code. So here you see templates catering for that definition. So that combination, I could even click here once more. And we see our, we are now at a GitHub page where the code is also infra hosted for this. And if we click here on infra, and then we see a bicep tile um, file. So that's an infrastructure deployment file. And if we would look at this page, here we really see that exact implementation where a data product becomes infrastructure. So we start deploying lots of infrastructure here to cater for that need. And then after the deployment of the infrastructure has happened, you could complement that infrastructure with code, with metadata, and then the data itself. And that then ultimately would make a data product. I have a question on this, Peter. So this seems quite comprehensive. Uh, we have a lot of different things in the bundle for the definition of a data product, right? Uh, the infrastructure is there, the metadata definition is there. Uh, to be very specific, this uh, sounds and, and feels a bit uh, complicated, to be honest. Well, we have been talking to customers where uh, this definition of a data product at times is a bit uh, heavy, right? So they find it difficult to implement. It requires a lot of skills on the customer side to be set up. And uh, it's it's difficult, right? So you, you're kind of creating a, a, a lot of different data products could be created and that can blow up your infra estate uh, and, and difficult to manage. So in that perspective, uh, what is your opinion in this space? Uh, do you think that this is the only definition which we have and customers need to go or are we, are we going to talk about more? and uh, look into see like what would be the best approach. Uh, of course, there are teams with whom we talk to who like this approach, they have implemented it, it works for many. Uh, but personally, we have talked to a lot of customers who think that this is quite taxing and quite heavy and requires a lot of uh, skills on the customer side to make this happen. Uh, so I'd like to hear from uh, you on what exactly is, is your opinion on this space. Yeah, I think you're, you're, you're spot on. This is, in my view, quite a complex um, approach to establishing data product within your organization. I don't see many customers do this, so follow this approach. It leads, in my view, also to over-provisioning um, of resources, infrastructure resources, which could make your architecture also quite complex. I see lengthy discussions because, for instance, maybe you deploy Databricks or Azure Synapse, so that's quite a large resource then. How would that then work? Will each data set then within that resource become part of that data product? And do you allow then multiple of these data sets to be developed within that infrastructure resource? And if so, how would that then work? So in my view, yeah, not ideal. And um, so therefore I started crawling the internet and um, I, again, so I found a different definition. So this is Accenture well-respected consultancy firm. And here on this page, they give another definition. So a data product can be, according to them, either a data set, code, an analytical model, dashboard or report. Um, so really the, the outcomes um, of, of integration and, th and things you do. So th this I think is less coupled to the metadata as well, the infrastructure isn't there. So this is really a, a different type of definition. Question here. This definitely is the second definition of data products, which we, of course, see that it's a bit less complicated than the first one. Uh, but at the same time, there's there's a lot of uh, different items which have been defined as, which could become a potential data product in that sense. Uh, there are many a scenario which we see in, in, in customers that these can be uh, existing together, which need to be defined as a data product. Uh, so from your perspective, uh, how does this work out? Is this a pattern which is quite commonly used? 
definitely it's it's moving away from the the very hard infra metadata all bundled together approach to a more uh, uh, isolated approach. Uh, but at the same time, it has its own challenges. Uh, so can you shed some light in that in that space? Again, right. So so this could work. I see some organizations they start with this 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 approach or this way of defining data products. But in my view, at the end, it leads to data product washing. And so anyone could define anything as a data product. And um, these items here don't stand apart. So a code, so the code often is strongly related to a data set because in order to produce an and readable, reusable data set. For that, you need to have code as well. So there's a relationship between these two. Um, the code could be very well also be used for building data, so building reports, for instance. So again, not ideal. And um, yeah, therefore, here, another definition I found. And this is the definition of, um, so again, Microsoft. Um, another example, data products in Microsoft Purview. And here, if we scroll down, what we now mainly see a data product is defined as yeah, business concept. So logical entity in the catalog, you would give it a name, a description, you assign the ownership. And then lastly, you assign it to different data assets and data assets also in purview um, could be either a data set or a report or an analytical model. So you, in that respect, also have flexibility. But again, a different stand, different viewpoint here as well compared to the other two examples we uh, we discussed. Another question. So we saw definition two where we talked about different items being mapped into uh, the data product definition. And now we seem to have a third definition, which is mostly, uh, it seems to me like a mix of one and two, but uh, taking the positives out from one and two and creating a third definition of data products. Uh, but it would be super interesting to clarify this for customers, right? So what, uh, and, and viewers, on what exactly is the difference between uh, option two and option three? Are there similarities? Uh, could you shed some uh, clarity in that space? Yeah, option two, in my view, it, it's mainly the outcome of the activity. So the end result, the artifacts. Here in number three, so the third option I see, it has a stronger relationship also with the metadata because since you define it as a business concept and you will catalog it, you will comply it with a name, a description, you link it to owners, the associated data sets. So it's more an umbrella, um, so a concept, you link and you complement, you enrich it with metadata. And from there, yeah, yes, you draw relationships to where the actual physical data resides, and that could be in a data platform. But there's a relationship, yes, with the infrastructure, but it's not per se that the infrastructure is encapsulated or part of that data product. So it, it's more loosely coupled, and therefore you have flexibility. So if you would like uh, to complement each data set with its own infrastructure resource, Yes, you could do that. And I think this approach allows for that flexibility. However, if maybe you're a bit smaller in that respect, or you would like to do things more efficient, you could share your data platform, build multiple reusable data sets, and then you could link these data sets to actual data products. So you have that flexibility at least in here. And therefore, I'm honestly a bit more in favor of this last definition where you have that flexibility. Thank you, Pitan. As we come towards the end of episode nine, uh, we hope that we have provided uh, insights which will be super important for your organization and your customers. Uh, at the same time, the gist of this is that uh, these definitions of data products which we have seen, one, two, and three, uh, they should be clear to you. And uh, why is it important? As an organization, you need to standardize on one of these. So if you're choosing one, two, or three based on uh, what is your requirement at your organization, uh, it's fine. Uh, but the whole point is that uh, there needs to be a standardization. So you have to agree that you're going for approach one, two, or three, or that can cause uh, a lot of confusion. So we would recommend that you freeze uh, one of these approaches when you start your data platform journey. Uh, but at the same time, there are uh, a lot of different considerations which you need to take into consideration. Uh, so Pitain, could you share uh, more insights into that? what we could can conclude is there's no single yeah, correct definition out there. So there's also no industry standard. 
So it very much um, ends in defining a data product uh, yourself. So what you feel is important as an organization and you should set a standard and evangelize that throughout also the organization. Lots of customers I talk to and I ask, so what is the definition of a data product? And then sometimes even within a single team or across multiple teams, I get back different definitions or slightly with variations on how a data product is perceived. So my best practice, first, ensure you set a standard, make that clear throughout the organization. So evangelize that either you write it down in a document or a manifesto or anything, and then you should couple it with lots of guidance. So guidance on the rationale. So why is a data product important for your organization? The roles, um, how to handle the, the unique sources and applications and when data is distributed via other systems. What makes uh, the data set really itself. So there, there's lots of essential guidance you need to put in place for the um, data product design. So the data modeling aspect. So what makes data read optimized, atomic data, concatenated data, splitting out fields, how to deal with internal cross system keys, for instance, master data management reserved column names, uh, mappings, the interoperability also is really important. So it's not only, I think, agreeing on what approach you should follow as well, also the guidance you should give to all of these different teams. So it's a lot you need to think about. With that, we are at the end of episode nine. Hope that all of you have liked the content which we have produced for episode nine. Uh, and stay tuned for our next episode where we're going to deep dive into this uh, in detail. So we're going to make this more practical. We talked about a lot of theory in this particular uh, episode. Uh, and as we promised uh, with Data Pancakes, we are going to make this practical. So we're going to show you a practical example of how this works, how a data product uh, get its, gets into existence. And uh, hope to see you next time uh, in another two weeks. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, please subscribe if you have not already done. Take care.